Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field report. Harvest is underway in a lot of different areas. It's definitely a case of the have and the have-nots and everything in between. Many guys are harvesting drought-damaged crops where the beans and the corn died prematurely. With corn, moisture tells the story. Areas that died early are 18%. The rest of the field is 25, and in some cases, if you have replant in the mix, it's 35. This has got to be a nightmare for the people running the corn dryer. Yield reports coming in in the dry areas running from 120 to 170. Fields uh, with areas swinging from 120 to 270, and they're landing in that 2 to 10 range on field averages. Early soybeans that died early have wide swings as well. Reports coming in from field averages as low as 25 bushel up to the mid-50s. Areas that picked up August rain, seeing big dividends there. Bean yields in the range from the 70s to the 80s. Corn yields in the 250 to 300 bushel range. Those that saw small amounts of rain in August, we're seeing corn rolling in there at 180 to 230, and that's probably a pretty good chunk of the state. It's going to end up there. We'll see when this harvest gets rolling. And the bean yields in that 60, 70 bushel range. So you can see it's it's all over the board. The big corn yields are coming from those fields that have what I call that perfect photo finish. Those fields where the top and the bottom of the plant are green and the ear has got that ripe color to it. These fields continue to fill right to the black line, right to the finish. A lot of the later planted corn is on this path as well if it received timely rains in August. Later planted beans are responding to the August rains as well. This could make some interesting yield results when this is done. As some of these beans started to turn due to dry weather, kind of pushing them along, when the rain came they stopped turning. As I watched some fields I thought, well, they're going to lose their leaves in a few days. And they've hung on now over two weeks. And the bean size did improve. So even though they're yellow, it looks like it made a difference in our bean size. I do believe we'll see some interesting differences between bean maturities and planting dates when this is all done. This year's a good example of why you don't put all your eggs in one basket. You never know what Mother Nature will throw at you. Out in the fields this week, we continue to see the tar spot kick up in that later corn, which should go into our scouting reports um, for that field, especially for you guys that are corn on corn. It's good to know where that tar spot is. We found another field in the Wapella area with triple stack resistance uh, to rootworm and a situation where that's something we need to keep an eye on. Combine operators, when you're running across down corn out there in the field and you can't explain it by a storm it might be worth taking the time stop the combine and dig a few plants and see if rootworms the issue again when we run into this resistance it seems to be a neighborhood type of a problem so if you have a field that shows resistance keep an eye on the bean fields near it as well for next year's corn scouts don't forget Harvest scouting continues through harvest, especially in these dry areas. Be out there pushing on those stalks to keep the harvesters focused on the right field so nothing goes down before we get to it. Keep an eye on this crown rot. We don't want to lose any of this corn. Combine operators, be sure to watch your harvest loss. Check every field and every hybrid or variety. Two kernels per square foot in corn equals a bushel. Four beans per square foot uh, equals a bushel of beans. A good target, shoot for less than 2% in the corn and less than 3% loss in the beans. Check loss when yields swing hard, like they are in a lot of these fields in the dry areas. With a 100 bushel swing in corn, stop and recheck your harvest loss. We may have to readjust strippers and speed in those areas. When you're out checking yield loss in the wide swinging areas of the field, it's not a bad idea to do some kernel counts and yield estimates. Write these down and where they came from 
that'll give us some indication of what the swings in kernels per bushel you have in your genetics. We've already seen 55,000 kernels per bushel up to 120,000 in some of the hybrids, while the others were just abort kernels. So this would be a good way to learn when we see those wild swings this winter in our yield map meetings, we know did it give up kernels, did it change kernel size, is it loss of ears. We've started spraying some harvest aids on fields to knock out those weeds so we can get them through the combine. Remember, I'd like to see at least 65% of the pods to be brown when we use a harvest aid. Talk with the grower this week who tried to take a field full of water hemp. While the beans were dry, the water hemp really messed up the back of the combine. Some of these early beans planted early that are full of hemp may not make it to a killing frost before the beans start to shatter. Keep an eye on this. If your combine doesn't have the kahunas to handle the water hemp, you may have to bring in a harvest aid. The plot crews have already started plotting. The soil test crews have already started testing. If you have plots getting close, as much notice as you can give us would be great. Let us know when you're harvesting those fields to be tested. The crews will stay right on top of the combines We get you a timely turnaround on your soil test results. To stay up to date, check out our website at croptechinc.com and subscribe to our podcast, Boots in the Field Report. Keep her safe, keep her moving.